Hey everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome me back. It's been a while. It's nice to see you. I wanted to make a video about figuring out whether or not you need a Linux certification. And this is something that's come up because I've been busy starting a new job. And in my new job, uh, I work with Linux every day. And I think this is pretty common the higher you get in IT. Um, if you are a technical person, uh, hands-on that is, you will not be able to keep your hands away from a Linux command line. So, it's not something to be feared, it's something to be understood, to be enjoyed, and to learn about. The question of whether or not you need a Linux certification obviously depends on what your career goals are and your existing knowledge and experience with Linux. Now, if you grew up using Linux, you're very familiar with it, or you use it at home, you may not need a Linux certification. Um, it might just be a nice to have to prove to your employers that you have a working knowledge. However, most employers are looking for people who have the skills they need to do the job. So if you can prove that you have have those skills to your employer, um, then it may not be necessary. However, if you're just getting into IT or you don't have a job yet, or you've never touched Linux, you have um, very little experience or understanding of how it works, <laughs> a Linux certification can be a great way to establish foundational knowledge and understanding of a different operating system. Now, I'm using the term Linux very loosely in this video. Um, as you'll come to understand, there's many different distributions of Linux, which are different expressions, different configurations, different flavors. Um, they're referred to as distros for short. Now, the first major point in favor of getting a Linux certification, if you feel like you are not beyond that level already, over 9,000! Certifications are better than education. And the reason is, is because certifications are standardized. And so somebody could have a computer science degree and have a huge holes in their knowledge in certain areas. Um, also, you could have 10 different candidates for a job that all have the same degree, but have totally different levels of understanding and knowledge in different areas of computer science or information technology. So I think from an employer perspective, when they see a certification, they know that you know at least this, right? But if they see a degree, they're like, okay, he has a shotgun shell approach, like a spattering here, a spattering there, and there's not really any way for them to know what you really enjoyed, what you were good at, what you focused on. Um, you could have spent all your time coding in JavaScript and they need you to know C Sharp. So, you know, it's, it's, it's really the standardization of certifications, I think, makes them more valuable to employers. The most valuable thing to employers is experience. Now, that's another topic. The second point in favor of getting Linux certification is simply that Linux is everywhere. If you haven't encountered it yet, you are definitely going to. Um, now, as far as desktop environments go, only about 3% reportedly of the world's desktop computers are running Linux. So to the average person, they might not even know what Linux is. They have no idea uh, how prolific it is. But once you get into the IT world, you start to see that under the hood, tons and tons and tons of devices are running Linux. Billions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions. For example, 96% of the world's top million web servers run Linux. So we're, we're powering Facebook, we're powering Wikipedia, we're powering all of these web applications with servers that run Linux operating systems. Um, not only that, but if you consider Android, which uses the Linux kernel, that's about 70% of the world's mobile phones are running Linux. And uh, in terms of developers preference, over 50% of developers actually do use Linux desktop environments. So if you're looking to become a developer, if you're looking to get into IT, if you're looking to get into cybersecurity, you definitely need to learn Linux. It's going to come in handy. There's an article that I'll link down below that gives a little more breakdown of how prevalent the Linux kernel is and Linux distributions and how it shows up in different ways. One other one is the Chrome OS is actually just a Chrome browser interface based on the Linux kernel. 
The last thing I'll say in favor of getting Linux certification is that it will build your confidence um, when you encounter random terms um, or you know the file systems of a Linux of a Linux operating system. You're not going to be feeling suddenly like you're treading in deep water. You're going to have some familiarity with some terms, some structure, some basic systems, some basic commands, and you're going to be comfortable with that, which is good. That's going to help you to feel like you're in your element. It's going to mitigate that imposter syndrome that affects every single person in IT. Um, and it's also going to give you something to talk about in an interview. So you can uh, talk about some of the things you learned or maybe some labs that you did uh, that were inspired while you're studying for the Linux uh, certification. And um, that's great. That's awesome to have something to talk about and show your employer, like, look, I went out of my way to pursue this on my own or, you know, I did it while I was in school or something like that um, and got some really standardized knowledge that they can rely on. Okay, great, great. There's tons of awesome things about getting a Linux certification, but what are the cons? What are the downsides? We're talking money, we're talking time, and which one do you get? So the cost of Linux certifications, there's two main ones. There's the Linux Plus and there's the LPIC one. Now, the question of which one you should get, I'm gonna cover in another video, but basically the cost ranges from about $300 to $400, and that's not cheap. However, if you really, really want this and you think you need it, um, there's plenty of ways to figure out how to afford it. Um, you could simply save up if you have a job, or if you live at home and you don't work, maybe you're still in school, um, try to convince your parents. If they're supportive, I'm sure that they would be happy to invest in your future. If cost is a barrier and you absolutely cannot pay for this, you can still take advantage of a lot of free study materials that are out there and you could still study for the exam, you can learn the information and then you can show up to your interview and say, if cost is a barrier that you simply cannot overcome, then what you could do is you could still study for the exam, you could learn all the required materials to pass, and then just show up to your interview and be like, hey, I wasn't able to take this um, due to financial restrictions, but I know everything on this exam and I would be happy to prove it to you. Give me a command line, let me show you what I know. If you show up with that kind of confidence and you truly have the knowledge, uh, you're gonna impress your employers. Again, they don't really care about the pieces of paper you have to your name. At the end of the day, most employers in IT care about the skills you have. The skills and then the knowledge. Do, can you do your job? Can you do what they're hiring you to do? That's what they wanna know. All right, so the last question on this list is, which certification should you get? There's the Linux Plus by CompTIA, and I'm a fan of CompTIA. If you've seen any of my other videos, uh, I've done a lot of Network Plus, I've done a lot of uh, Security Plus, and the first certification I got was the A Plus. But there's also the LPIC one. And if you wanna know which one you should take, watch my next video. Bye.